This is the 10x Your Business Podcast with Itai Paz, session number 13. Yo, we're celebrating a bar mitzvah. Welcome to the 10x Your Business Podcast, where it's all about 10x your business results. Get more clients, make more money, and have more free time. And now, your host, entrepreneur, best-selling author, trainer, and international speaker, Itai Paz. Welcome back to the 10X Your Business Podcast. I'm so excited. I have an amazing guest today, Perry Marshall. Perry, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Itay. It's great to be here. Great to be on your show. It's been a while since you know I was in Israel uh, helping you with a seminar a while back, and now we're back again. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. It was amazing when you were here. I was able to, you know, you were, you were on stage, and we had a great time afterwards and traveling. And, you know, you're one of the, you know, senior guys in the industry. Uh, I, I, I say, you know, I call it the godfather of Google AdWords. You know, you're a best-selling author. You wrote this book, which I love, 80-20 uh, rule, sales and marketing. If you haven't read it, you, you need to do that. You're probably one of the smartest guys in the industry. You think differently. You're an international speaker. You're a consultant. You do many amazing stuff. Can you share a little bit about your, you know, your journey? Uh, because things change over years. Your entrepreneurial and business owner as a business owner over time or online. Um, my education was in engineering, and you know, I guess uh, from pretty early on, engineering got jammed together with sales, and it happened because. I got recruited into Amway when I was 21. And, um, and so I ended up kind of being this two-headed monster. So, you know, I, I've never left the engineering behind, really. Um, uh, on a surface level, people think, oh, what you do, well, that's like totally different than engineering. I'm like, actually, no, it's not. Um, you know, when, when, when I was in school, they would teach, all right, you got to process and the plastic pellets go in this side of the machine and the finished goods come on this side of the machine. You're going to do all of these things. And, you know, that's not any different really than a bunch of people hitting a website, uh, which costs you a bunch of money. You know, that's the raw materials. And then, you know, you turn out customers who believe certain things, like certain things, buy certain things and on the other end. And, and, and so it's all process control. Um, and and it's all numbers and and the world has never been more numbers driven than it is right now and it's just getting more that way but then there's that quirky aspect of human beings you know how do you deal with those crazy human beings um and and that's the fast that's the art that's the art of marketing and so i i really embrace both and i i just kind of keep going back and forth and i guess you know that just having that background gives you a really different perspective than a lot of other people, you know, and another thing that comes to mind is, you know, one of my friends a long time ago, he goes, well, you know, Perry, you know, a lot of those internet marketing guys never actually had a real job. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and he says to me, he goes, you know, you used to, you used to sell industrial hardware and software to factories and like, you know, you can't ship a bag of smoke to those guys. Like it has to work, you know, downtime is $15,000 an hour or a minute or, you know, some, it's actually, yeah, like $15,000 a minute. So like you, you can't mess around, you can't make stuff up. And, you know, if you under promise by 1%, that's okay. If you over promise by 1%, eh, you're dead. Right. And so, you know, that that's another piece of it is is I I take business really seriously. You know, there's there's careers on the line, there's jobs on the line, there's futures on the line, you know. Um, you know, I got a bunch of employees and they all have families and they all, you know, but just think about all the customers. Think of all your customers, Ite. How many people do you affect? And how many guys are you know working on stuff and they 
they say to their wife, you know, Ite says, Ite says, Ite says, and she's like, who's this Ite guy? Well, he's an important guy. Um, he affects what they do. He affects what the, the inventory they buy and the promotions they do and how they get customers. You know, this is, this is a big deal. I have so, to go ahead. Sorry. I'm going to move because it's noisy. Go ahead. You know, I, I, I always took it seriously, but I never thought about it that it like this. It's very, you know, we, I, I know we affect people, but you, you went through the, you know, down to the thought you're actually impacting maybe the everything they do in their business on a daily basis, what they spend, where they spend, how they do it. It's very powerful. And, and I'm sure not everyone are actually uh, understanding the power of when, when you have clients and you give them advice and give them information, what to do. It's a big responsibility. And, you know, like everybody wants to be on social media and everybody wants to have a podcast and they all want to be a superstar and they all want to write a book and, you know, and on one level, like God bless them. That's great. But on another level, you know, you know, that comes with a lot of responsibility. It, I mean, it really does. Like if you're going to give people business advice, you better darn well know what you're talking about. And, you know, you see this, you see the negative sides of this um, when you work with a lot of people because there's a lot of doubt and there's a lot of cynicism. There's a lot of skepticism and um, people, it makes people gun shy. It makes people hesitant. It makes them confused. Um, and, you know, an old adage in marketing is a confused mind always says no. Well, you know, having a few million people out there in a state of paralysis, that is that is not good. Um, you know, I remember just as a kind of a, a grand perspective on this, uh, some people might who are listening might know who Joe Sugarman is. He's famous for being the founder of blue blocker sunglasses and he made millions and millions of dollars. In fact, he has two gorgeous homes in Maui on the shore, which I have been to. Uh, one of them is the most, one of the most beautiful pieces of property that I've ever seen in my life. So, you know, very successful guy. Well, he is the guy, he was, he's the first person to have a toll-free 800 number um, in, in advertising for products and take credit cards over the phone, okay? So this is back in the 1970s with one of the companies he has. And um, I asked him, he was speaking at one of my seminars, and I said, Joe, what was it like to be running a startup business during the Jimmy Carter presidential administration between 1976 and 1980. And he says, he says, oh my goodness. He goes, well, you know, so those of you who don't know Jimmy Carter, you know, he was like this really nice guy who wore a sweater and he would be like a great grandpa, but like he was not a decisive leader. He did not inspire confidence. He was kind of a wishy-washy guy. And the whole country was in a recession, double-digit unemployment, double-digit inflation, um, double-digit interest rates. It was a mess. And, and, he, and Joe says every time the president would do something indecisive, sales would go down. <laughs> and now... To, to give you a contrast to that, I remember when I was just a kid, but Reagan got voted into office. And at the time, there were all these American hostages in Iran. And Carter had been negotiating with, I don't know, like a year. This is just dragging on and on, and these hostages are there. Reagan gets sworn into office and within 24 hours, the hostages are free. And it was like, man, the Iranians do not want to mess with this guy. Now, Reagan, like they, people had all these, uh, these uh, criticisms. Oh, the guy is an actor and all this kind of, stuff. you know what? Reagan had charisma and he had confidence and he stepped up there. He's like, this is what we're doing. This is where we're going. We're going to make America great. 
we're going to get back on track and people responded to that and like the whole mood shifted. Now, I'm not making a political statement here at all. I am making a leadership statement. I am saying people need to know what are we going to do and what's going to happen next. But then the people that are calling the shots or dispensing the advice, like you need to have been there. You need, and you know, like when, uh, when people, when people ask me, how do I find a person to manage my Google AdWords account? I say, hire somebody who can prove to you that they learned on their own dime and they made it profitable and they can prove to you that it was profitable. Here's what we spent on the advertising. Here's the margins. Here's the sales that we made. Here's the profit. I did this. I can sign my name to this. That's the guy you hire because he did it. And there are so many posers, there are so many charlatans, there are so many people like fake it till you make it. Like you cannot afford to listen to those people. You cannot, it will kill you. You will sink your ship and drown. And so how do you know who they are? You're, uh, you know, someone is coming and say, oh, I did this, I did that. Well, there's always signs. Okay. And so they have stories with a lot of details and it's not just a theory. And, you know, anymore, there's going to be lots of social proof. Um, you know, if, if you go to my homepage of my website, I've got testimonials from Dan Kennedy, J. Abraham, Michael Gerber, Richard Kosh, like, really credible people, um, you know, and it's not just, hey, I run a flower shop and this guy doubled our sales last year. Um, and, it, you know, you start to be able to tell if, if you, if you want to detect counterfeit money, you start by handling real money, right? Like, this is what it looks like. This is what it feels like. This is how it rolls in your fingers. This is how it folds up in your pocket and you start to recognize it. Absolutely. And, and so I, I don't know, I'm getting off on a tangent. I probably don't want to be on much longer, but um, you really got to be careful who you listen to. Um, in Absolutely. So I'm, I'm jumping, you know, you were talking about Edwards and campaigns. So uh, there is a quote, I'm quoting what you, you actually said. Uh, and, and I'm quoting you. Google is, the casino yes. and you're playing against the house. Yes. So could you explain what it means? Because it's really a, a, a big, big statement. Yeah. Well, so, so first of all, um, let's talk about what that means in the good sense. Um, now in, in a casino, it's a, it's a negative sum game. There's always more money that goes in than comes out. Okay. And Google doesn't have to be that way. Um, you know, Google gets right now I know, $75 million or, or billion dollars of billion dollars of advertising revenue every year. And it probably generates a, a trillion dollars of business out there. Okay. Um, and that's, that's great. Um, and so in that sense, you know, it's not, we're not just carving up pies. There is a real, creation of wealth that is going on and of course it's you have to create the wealth um, through the product and your sales story and, and everything like that but Google is like a slot machine you put money in and you pull the lever and you put money in and you pull the lever and it's all a game of well can you get more money to come out than goes in um, and so that's, that's the positive side, but there's also a negative side, which is, you know, Google is not really your friend. Now, in theory, they could be. Google could, in theory, be super supportive of, of their advertisers and, you know, really trying to, uh, to help them out. But, um, boy, I tell you, if I had a, a dollar for every time I've heard the story, well, Google offered to come and optimize our advertising campaigns and they turned a bunch of winners into a bunch of losers. 
cost somebody $30,000 and like, oops, I'm sorry. Like this has happened a lot. Okay. Uh, like a lot, a lot. And they design their interface to extract maximum money from advertisers. There's stupidity tax built into the thing all over the place. And like, you really have to be careful. It really is caveat mTOR buyer beware. Um, they are not looking out for the interest of the advertiser particularly. And, um, and there is a whole parallel to the casinos. And I had several people tell me this, I, I don't gamble. I don't really even like to go to Las Vegas. I, I think it's kind of a negative place, but there's a lot to be learned there. You know, my, my, my friend, John Paul Mendocha, he's on my staff and he helps us with a lot of consulting projects. He's a brilliant strategist and he cut his teeth in Vegas. He dropped out of high school at age 17, hitchhiked to Las Vegas and became a professional gambler for three and a half years, living by his wits, uh, working in a professional gambling ring. So he knows Vegas inside and out. And he's got this whole story told me there um, in the in the 60s and 70s, all these people really started figuring out how do you play blackjack and how do you play poker and how do you do all these games? How do you count cards? How do you, you know, like it got really sophisticated. And so there was like this elite, maybe one, two, three percent of people that would go to Vegas and they really knew what they were doing. Uh, and there were guys, they learned how to count cards and they would go to Vegas and they would make money every single day playing uh, at these poker tables and blackjack tables because they like they knew how to do it. And so there's all these people, they just got off the plane from Wichita and they're, they're at lost wages and they think they're going to make money and they keep losing money. And the casinos are starting to watch these people and it's like, these, man, these card counters are creating a bad experience for all these other people here, you know. We got to get rid of them. And, um, you know, and so I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm selling AdWords books and courses and training and coaching and I'm consulting with people and I'm in and out of all these Google accounts and I'm seeing all this stuff, you know, and my friends who've spent a lot of time in Vegas, they're going, you know, I really don't think these Google guys like you very much. You know, you're, you know, you're teaching people how to win at this thing and it's, it's shutting everybody out. You know, this is like, Google doesn't really like this, you know, like, wow, you know, and, and, um, and, and so in this same thing that happened with the casinos, like the casinos, they, they got laws passed, you know, you can't count cards. They're installing security cameras. They got all these guys walking around watching what's going on. They're paying attention to how much every person is making. Uh, you may be asked by the staff to leave and not come back. And like, when you come back, they'll recognize you because their security knows who you are, you know? And so there's, uh, there's definitely a little bit of similarity um, when, when you're playing the game, um, in, in pay-per-click, uh, now I'll also say, you know, it's also gotten very corporate and there's, you know, Google knows the 80, 20 rule better than anybody. And they know that 50% of their income comes from 1% of their advertising accounts and they love it. They love it when big, dumb corporations just dump money into the AdWords system and do and not be very effective and not be very efficient but still bid up the bid prices they love that so when you're playing this game you need to be really sharp do not even think about playing the adwords game without getting a really solid education because if you don't get that education your clock will get cleaned and you won't even know what happened to you it's amazing and how do you see facebook is that the same or similar analogy you know, Facebook, um, you know, I got banned from Facebook for about nine months last year. Um, but Facebook does seem to be less adversarial with customers than Google was. Um, I'm not sure why that is. It, it might be simply that it's, 
you know, in Google AdWords, especially back in the day, it was pretty easy to be anonymous. Like there was lots of people just hiding behind a website and driving Google traffic and you didn't even know who they were. And it's not really possible to be an anonymous on Facebook. So maybe the environment just lends itself to, to fewer problems. But, you know, look, Facebook is also a big giant machine and they're going to award the people that make them the most money per thousand impressions. Um, I have to say the technology is evolving so fast and the targeting, I mean, Facebook is really sophisticated. And I, I have a book on Facebook advertising too. It's called Ultimate Guide to Facebook Advertising and it's co-authored with Keith Kranz who is a absolute Facebook genius. And so, um, you know, the, the, the technology is now evolving faster than people can learn how to use it. It's really interesting. They are pouring a ton of money in developing the platforms. And it, it's, um, if, if you can be on the cutting edge, if you can be in the top 1% of pay-per-click, it, it's amazing time to be alive. Absolutely. So you, you were talking about 80-20. Uh, so like, like I said, I have the book, you know, the 80, 20, uh, sales and marketing. So in your perspective, what is the effect or, or how does it, how do you, uh, take it into implementation or make gun main guidelines when thinking about 80, 20 in marketing and sales? Well, you know, most people, I think sort of know what 80, 20 is most people people that are listening to this interview probably know that 80% of your sales are going to come from 20% of your customers and they know a few things like that. But first of all, I would like to suggest that most people don't actually know what 80-20 really is. Um, that would actually be the best assumption that you can make. Um, I thought I knew what 80-20 was uh, quite a few years ago. And one day I suddenly had this giant epiphany and I realized I, I had never recognized it for what it really is. So what is 80-20 really? Well, I thought it was like this rule of thumb that applied to certain things in business and that just business people sort of talk about it. No, it's actually a master law of cause and effect. Uh, what do I mean by that? Uh, so Let's say that we, we take your kitchen table and there's a leak in your roof and you, we start dripping water on your kitchen table. Well, the water is going to run off somewhere and make a puddle on the floor. Well, if it, it doesn't matter how flat you try to make your kitchen table, the water is not going to spill off the edge evenly in every direction. You can't get it to do that. There will always be some direction where it's not completely flat and it's going to run that direction. And as soon as that happens, well, if that water drips for a year or a million years, like you'll, you'll get a Grand Canyon. So that groove will start to get deeper and deeper and deeper and then it will start sprouting complexity and you know and it'll like that grand canyon thing will happen now that is an embodiment a pure embodiment of 80 20 is all you need is a little bit of something happening somewhere and you'll get a reinforcement of the process in the case of the water it's well the water just because the water is running at all it starts wearing a path in your table and it makes a little river and then the river makes a deeper river and that's 80 it, that's 80 20. so you go to the grand canyon and you look at all those little ripples on the rock and all the grooves and everything that's 80 20. everything is like that uh, the size of craters on the moon the size of sands on the seashore um, the size of files on your hard drive how much customers spend, which products they buy, customer service support tickets, it goes on and on and on. So first you have to understand this is absolutely everywhere. The second step is there's always an 80-20 inside every 80-20. 
Um, so we, you can open a little window on your hard drive and look at your files and you can sort them from biggest to smallest and I guarantee you 20% of the files take 80% of the space. But what's also true is 20% of those files take 80% of that much space and 20% of those files take 80% of that much space, right? So if your hard drive's full, you can probably clear, you know, like 10% of it by deleting three files, and you don't have to go through 300. You only have to do three. Um, and so there's an 80-20 inside every 80-20. So 80-20 is fractal. It's pattern within a pattern within a pattern within a pattern. It actually it goes on infinitely. This is so powerful. In fact, that's really kind of the whole theme of the book. Now, there, there's a third part of 80-20, which is you don't just look at it in the rear view mirror. You use it to make predictions. You can use it forward. You can, you can use it as an alchemist. You can use it as a tool for your imagination. So, for, so here's an example. Um, in one of the chapters of the book, I, it's called the, the Starbucks principle of the $2,700 espresso machine. And, um, and in, in the book, I've got this little tool, and it's called the 80-20 curve. It's at 8020curve.com. And if you learn how to use the tool, we've got a little instruction on the website. You can, you can look at things and you can make predictions. So you can say, well, I've got 5,000 people every month coming into Starbucks and they're all spending $2 on a cup of coffee. Well, 8020 says, well, then I can pretty much guarantee you that at least one of those people will buy a $2,700 espresso machine. And it's almost a law of physics. I, it's, it's pretty much guaranteed that out of those thousands of people, one of them wants to spend two or three thousand dollars on coffee, and ten of them want to spend two or three hundred dollars on coffee. And at first, you're like, "How are you going to spend two or three hundred bucks on coffee?" Well, you're going to go buy something like an espresso machine. And the funny thing about the person that buys the stainless steel $2,700 espresso machine is they're back at Starbucks the next day buying another latte. It doesn't even stop them from doing the thing they were doing yesterday. It's, it's like the money wants to get spent just like the water wants to roll off your table. It's going to find a way to go there. And like all these people might even look equal, but they're not. Just like the table looks flat, but it's not. And so all of business is driven by huge inequalities. Like there's all these economists and they all have a theory that markets are in equilibrium. No, they're not. No market is ever in equilibrium. It's all chaos. It's all inequality. And so I think most people think about stuff completely the wrong way. People talk about average when average is usually completely meaningless. And we're taught this way in school. Absolutely, and, and you know, you know, we say about average that the average is, is something bad. You don't want to be average, never ever. Right, you don't right. Want to be it's, it's almost never to your benefit to be average, right? You you want to be way below average. You want to be way above average. You, you want to be on the edge of the curve, not the middle. Absolutely, absolutely. So. Now that you, you outlined the three parts of that, so a business or an entrepreneur that has clients coming, how does, uh, and I know you, I'm asking you, you know, we can go into real depth. How can he uh, take it into something more feasibility, 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 to a feasibility stage? Well, so the the first thing is is to recognize this. You, you should be able to open almost any spreadsheet or any financial report and you will if if you start looking for it like you'll see it everywhere um the the number one purpose of 8020 sales and marketing is that by the time you've read the book and it's an easy book to read it's it's a it's 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 a it's a fun read that 
by the time you've gone through that book, you have seen 80-20 so many places that you literally, you can no longer look outside your kitchen window and not see 80-20. It is everywhere. And when you can see 80-20 everywhere, you can walk into any business, including your own, and you can go, oh, yeah. 80% of the support tickets are caused by 20% of the problems. I can't solve 140 problems, but I can solve four. I can get rid of this one, this one, this one, and this one, and 60% of my support tickets go away. Okay? Here, here's another one. Um, 20% of what you do makes 80% of your money. Now, most of the time, what we talk about in, in marketing is we go, okay, so let's look at the 20% that you're doing that's making 80%, or let's look at the 4% that's creating 64% of your results, and let's do more of that stuff. And it's about more, and it's about growing sales, and that's fine. But there's another one thing that I want you to think about is you could reduce your sales by 20% if you picked the right 20% and you could still make 80% as much money and only work three hours a day instead of working eight hours a day. Now, almost nobody actually seriously tries to do that. Most people are so obsessed with more, with pushing the envelope, with looking for more things to do. And we don't even realize it, but it really is true. Now, in order to do that, you're probably going to have to kind of take your business apart and put it back together. And I'm finding myself doing that with a lot of private clients where we really roll up our sleeves and work with them. Um, and a lot of times people are not going to do this at all unless they're forced to. Like there's an economic correction or the market suddenly shifts underneath you. And, you know, you used to have this product line. It was selling great. And all of a sudden nobody wants to buy it anymore. Right. And you got payroll to meet or something like this. But, you know, there, there really is this huge tendency for businesses to become much complicated, more so than they were ever intended to be or ever should have been. Uh, complexity creep is all just like automatic. And, we, and then we get our egos invested in stuff. Like, oh, I love that product. You know, I was, you know, and you get, you fall in love with these things or, or you really like employees that aren't actually useful to you anymore. And you think you're obligated to keep them around, and actually you're not. Well, you, you gave actually great, like uh, we say it in Israel, you know, tachles, you know, to the point. And, and it's easier to understand, but I have a question for you regarding that. So you said it 80-20, um, so focus on the 20% or even more, let, you know, go into depth. Let's say 20% makes you the 80, increase that. Right. But as we're looking at a business or business funnel, in order for you to get the 20%, which could be like high-end mastermind, high-end coaching, consulting clients, you need to begin with 80% uh, that is, right. you know, you're just screening them. How do you see right. that? Well, so you need to do it deliberately. Now, I do it very deliberately, and I'll, gi I'll give you an example. Uh, this is a, like a perfect example of what you're talking about. If you go to perrymarshall.com slash 8020, we sell 8020 sales and marketing for a penny plus shipping, which is $7 shipping US and $14 international. Now, we buy these books from the publishers. We are essentially taping dollar bills to every book that goes out. And we're selling 80% of the people that buy the books. Actually, it's 79.6% of the people who buy those books never buy anything else. Okay, so we lose money on 79.6% of those people. But it works 
and it gets us customers and 21, 20.4% of the people, like the rest of them, they do buy more stuff. And so we are doing a loss leader in a calculated, self-aware way. Okay, and so in 80-20, there always is a 100% somewhere, okay? <laughs> there has to be. Yeah, absolutely. But you, ha but it's, it's going from being unaware to being aware. Now, I will guarantee you, most businesses are losing money every time they sell certain things and don't know it. It's almost like probably 95% of the time this is true. 95% of the people listening to this who own a real business and you're, you know, you're stocking the shelves or you're serving the clients. 95% of people, this is true. It, 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 this guy named Lynn Bertain, he calls it the 2120 rule. So let me explain this to you. 120% of your profit is made from 20% of your, the products you sell. And then that's the top 20, that's the best 20%. The worst 20% of the products you sell lose 20% of your profit. It gets the 120 down to 100. And if you got rid of 20% of your product line, you would actually make more money. I, if you got rid of 20% of your clients, you would make more money. If you got rid of 20% of your employees, you would make more money. Now, th this is going to be true 80 to 95% of the time for all the people out there. Nobody wants to hear it, but it's true. Um. You know, my, the president of my company and I, we have been painstakingly combing through our business, getting rid of stuff that's not making money. You would be amazed at how wrapped up our egos get in these things that we do and these things that we sell. And it's, it's really scary, but <laughs> it's true. And so, you know, we we're actually making our business more profitable by getting rid of stuff. We realize there's these certain products that we sold. No, we don't actually make money doing that. Um, and so anyway, you know, I'm, I'm living it right now myself. So uh, I wouldn't be talking about it if, if I wasn't signing up for the program. Barry, that, that was really amazing. And, and for all the listeners, you know, the business owners, entrepreneurs, like if you listen carefully, if, to what Pierre Marshall just said, and you should, like he said that earlier, and, and you, you never see the, 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 the things ever the same. You always see the 80-20. Yes. So this was really, really powerful. Um, the book, uh, you said they can get it uh, on pierremarshall.com slash 80-20? Yes, and you can also buy it on Amazon. And, uh, you know, I... I really encourage you to read this book. This is my manifesto on how sales and marketing should be done. And, you know, 80-20 was true 10,000 years ago. It was true 100 years ago when Pareto discovered it. It's true today. It's going to be true in 100 years. I would submit to you that if you're really trying to master marketing, you will learn more about marketing, having to memorize and learn fewer things from this book than any other book I know. That that eighty twenty explains almost everything that works in marketing. It explains why it works and why you should do it that way, and it helps you isolate. And the, the last thing I want to say about it is, early on in the book, I say this. I say... Sales and marketing is not a convincing people process. It is a disqualification process. Now, this is completely backwards from the way most people think about sales or marketing. But here's the thing. 
80% of all the people you think you should be selling to, you shouldn't be selling to. You should be get they're not, they don't have the money or they don't agree with your unique selling proposition or they don't have the ability to say yes to you or it doesn't fit their overall plans and uh, or whatever. And if you're selling to the wrong people, they're not going to buy. They're not going to buy. And so the first thing you should always do is figure out who should I not advertise to? Who should not be visiting my website? Who should I not have on my webinar? Who should I not go to see? Who should I not call? Who should I not send an email to? And then you're going to get rid of 80%. And now the 20% that's left, you actually have a good chance. And you can so reduce your efforts. You know, and so there's all these old school sales guys and they're like, it's a numbers game. It's a numbers game. Just, just keep making more phone calls and just keep, it's bad advice. Okay. And the rookie sales guy in his heart, he knows it's bad advice, but he doesn't have any track record. He doesn't have any credibility. He doesn't know anything. He doesn't, you know, so who is he to argue? So he just goes and he does this. Um, and I, oh boy, I just, this is the book I wish I had read 20 years ago when I was starting out as a sales guy and I was just eating bologna sandwiches and ramen soup and my wife is pregnant with our first kid and oh my goodness, <laughs> can I please save somebody some pain and suffering? Perry, I want to thank you very much for being here and sharing this amazing, uh, valuable, you know, uh, information and, and guys, again, read this book very it's a life-changing business wise and in life so thank you very much for being here ite it's a pleasure greetings to you in israel look forward to seeing you next time we're in the same country and we'll mix it up we'll have dinner absolutely thank you and thank you for all the listeners uh and i'll see you the next next podcast Thank you for tuning in to the 10X Your Business podcast with Itai Paz at www.itaipaz.net slash podcast. We will be back with another great podcast next week. If you're digging what you're hearing, your next step is to go to iTunes and in the search box, type 10X Your Business. Click on Itai's picture and go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. And if you're feeling generous and you want to help other business owners and entrepreneurs like you to find this podcast, then give us your rating and review. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next one.